Good morning and welcome to this time of worship, joining the churches of Emmanuel and St Paul's in the heart of Fazakali. My name is Mike Hindley, I'm the vicar in this team of churches and it's my privilege to welcome you today. Just a couple of things to let you know about. Firstly, that after this time of worship, if you go back to our Facebook page, it's Fazakali Parish on Facebook, you can join us that's Kate and myself, uh, for coffee at the rectory. Please do join us there after this time of worship. Secondly, to let you know that our kids' work continues and there's some fantastic um, children's sessions and worship going on as 10.30 every Sunday. Please do get in touch, especially uh, drop Kate, Kate Hindley a line, if you'd like to know more. Thank you so much to many of you who have given so generously to us. And if you'd like to know how you can continue to give or you'd like to find out for the first time, then please do look on our Facebook pages. Well, today as we come to worship, we're reminded that it's Father's Day. And today we celebrate the gift of fatherhood. Now, no matter of our experience on earth of fatherhood, whether good or bad, the good news is that today, God invites us to believe in him and to call him our Father in heaven. He's God who wants us to know him in that way, as children. And this is a Father who will never let us down. As our first hymn says, this is God who is our strength and refuge. We're going to hear today so much about the challenge of knowing God and following Jesus Christ. And today, wherever you are, whether watching or listening, you can receive this amazing life with God as you join in our service and as you hear and respond to what you've heard, knowing that God is always faithful to his promises. So we begin now our time of worship with the words that you'll find on the screen. And it's an opportunity for us to come clean, to come right with God as we continue our time together. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We join together today in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves 
to the service of God. So let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, which brings us to fullness of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, as we say together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and ashamed. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as you sit wherever you are, hear God's mercy, forgiveness and love. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'm now going to pass on to Steve for our Bible reading, and then we're going to hear straight away from Joy uh, about the passage today. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 10, verses 24 to 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it this is the word of the lord thanks be to god 
Good morning, everybody. Well, great. The job description for my new job has just arrived. Let's see its requirements. Not a paid wage, no money for subsistence, no work clothes, only those you're wearing, no safety gear, no proper shoes when out on the streets. <laughs> well, health and safety has gone completely out of the window. What would your answer be if you received this? For this was the job description Jesus gave to his disciples for their mission, for their mission of spreading the good news. Their overriding emotion, I would guess, would be one of fear, well and truly out of their comfort zone. Fear is a pervasive and powerful motivating force. And we can see it in our current headlines. Crisis, unease, nightmare, pandemic. Sadly, we are taught to fear. Sometimes out of good intention to protect ourselves, for example, parents to children, be careful. Sometimes to coerce. Political leaders have long recognized the power of fear, so we conform to the structures they want, often serving their interests and not ours. And we can see how the Romans in Jesus' time crucified those who defied Roman law. Fear is the driving force behind world economies often encouraging people to get into debt so more profit can be made for the shareholders. So it was that Jesus gave his pep talk to the Twelve of what to expect when telling the world about salvation through Jesus. Unlike today's pundits, Jesus gave them three balanced truths. Number one, love conquers fear. Number two, peace conquers conflict. And number three, the fullness of Christ conquers the shallowness of life's so-called rewards. So how does love conquer fear? Jesus recognizes the disciples' fear. He says, don't be afraid several times because he knows they will bravely leave the security of their families and jobs to spread the word that he is savior. We must remember that these were a band of simple men. Simple men, however, who had seen the true light of Jesus. They had seen him perform miracles. They had listened to his wisdom and they had faith. Peter would have been a tough nut to crack, as his work as a fisherman would have demanded practicality, not some airy-fairy theology. But he knew in his heart that Jesus was the Messiah. However, he gave in to fear when he denied Jesus. Aren't we a bit like Peter? When the going's good, our faith is strong. But what happens when things turn nasty? Do we blame God or do we seek him more? Jesus is aware of the dangers they'll face, so he gives them strong reasons not to fear, which are true for us. God's love. Verse 29 shows us God knows all that happens. He is the all-knowing God. But our very limited intelligence finds this hard to grasp. God is in control. He even knows when the tiny sparrows fall to the ground. But we are even more valuable. So much so that God sent his only son to die for us, to free us from sin, 
for God loves us. So we need never fear difficult trials because his spirit cannot be shaken from within us. God is love and God is in control. But is our faith strong enough to be completely dependent on God, the one who loves us? We are living through very testing times, as indeed the disciples were. But are we giving it over to God? Do we feel like sheep in the midst of wolves? Jesus says God will not take away the troubles that the disciples will encounter, nor will he take away our troubles. The real test is how well something holds us up in the wear and tear of life. And that something is the word of God, prayer, and the love of Jesus. Those who stand up for Christ in spite of suffering will have lasting values and receive great rewards in heaven. God understands our suffering because he experienced it on the cross. Now, please don't get me wrong. I am certainly not trivializing suffering. It's very, very real. Sadly, only this year, three of my very closest friends have died. And I have come to terms with that because of the love of God. But suffering, Jesus says to his disciples, is the first step of freeing them from fear. And since I've turned to God, my fears have completely lessened. Jesus describes worst case scenarios. They will be taunted, ridiculed, and they will risk death. Indeed, Peter was crucified in Rome. But they will receive their great rewards in heaven of eternal life. Don't we waver between pessimism and optimism? It is, after all, human nature. But the most important affirmation is our integral relationship with God through Jesus, through love. Proclaim from the roofs, Jesus tells the 12, to go out and preach the good news that through Jesus we will be saved, not from the world's claim to possess power, but from our sin that causes disunity and disharmony in God's wonderful creation. The threat of death and suffering is probably the most powerful form of fear that we all have. But Jesus addresses this with reassurance. The physical body will die, but by our faith, our souls are saved. And through faith, we will be with Jesus in heaven forever. The disciples knew that violence and death would be their real fears, as they would have witnessed crucifixions, stonings and torture under this cruel Roman rule. But no longer would it be the force that would dominate their lives. For the one who has ultimate power over our whole being is God. And God exercises his will with mercy, love and compassion if we are willing to believe as the twelve were. The second truth that Jesus says is peace con conquers conflict. Jesus says in verse 34 that he didn't come to bring the kind of peace that smooths over deep differences just for the sake of superficial harmony. Conflict and disagreement will arise between those who choose to follow Christ and those who don't. Fortunately, we are not 
persecuted in the West for our Christian belief, although we might be taunted and ridiculed. I know I was when I started to believe. But Peter encourages in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. How strong is our faith? And how do we speak about the love of Christ? Our commitment to follow Christ may separate us from friends and family. And Jesus is not encouraging disobedience to parents or conflict at home. Rather, he is showing that his presence demands a decision. And as we take up our cross and follow him, our different values, morals and goals will set us apart from others. Don't neglect family, but we need to remember our commitment to God and identify with Christ publicly. I know I have no fear of whoever I meet in the streets of telling them about my belief and my faith. And I always often hope that maybe I am sowing a little tiny seed in their souls, in their hearts. The third truth, fullness in Christ conquers the shallowness of life's rewards. Verse 39 offers us both the negative and positive. Clinging to what this life offers may cause us to forfeit the best from Jesus in this world and the next. The more we love this life's rewards of leisure, power, popularity, financial gain, status, the more we will discover how empty they really are. The best way to enjoy a fulfilled life, therefore, is to loosen our fearful grasp, because it is fear that makes us grasp on to these earthly rewards, so that we can be free to follow Jesus. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, the last few months of lockdown has encouraged believers and non-believers alike to refocus their priorities. In doing so, we will begin at once to experience the wonders of following Jesus as we will be liberated from our fears. To conclude, as Christians, what can we do to follow in the paths of the disciples? The last three months have been odd, to say the least. We've been given time to slow down and reflect upon the fragility of our lives. Our worldly security has been thrown up into the air. We have been woken up from our comforts. People have realized that their faith in worldly institutions has been shattered. And those who have paid little heed to God and Jesus are now turning to faith. As Christians, we need to be there for them, to answer their questions, to pray with them and for them, to encourage them to read God's word. God has given us the mission to go and bring others to him. Our actions should precede our words. Although I love coming into our church, I love the Emmanuel, I love Emmanuel Church, it's not just the building. We are the church of Christ and we need to show the love of Christ that is in our hearts. Let us remember what Jesus said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
We only need to believe to receive such love and peace. Let us pray. Dear Lord, God, by your Spirit, weave something of heaven into this patch of earth. We are living in difficult times and troubled souls are crying out for help. Grant them peace that they find your love, mercy and compassion. Give Christians here in Bazakli and in the world strength and clarity of mind to be, to be near each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Well, thank you, Joy, for that very challenging message. I've no doubt that we'll be unpacking that a little bit at our time after the service at coffee at the rectory. But as we continue to respond now, we're going to uh, sing to God in our hymn, and then we're going to go straight into our prayers. So our next song is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. we come to you in prayer we thank you for all your good gifts to us for the sunshine and the rain and the world you have provided for us Lord we ask for faith to keep trusting in you and we ask for your will in our lives we especially pray for those struggling at the moment being separated from loved ones and help us to remain faithful in keeping in contact and connecting with each other Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom for national leaders as they lead us through each phase of the lockdown. And we pray for many people who will be worried about returning to work or letting their children return to school. Keep us all safe, Lord. Protect us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for guidance for medics and researchers as they deal with each of the challenges brought by COVID-19. We pray too for those who are unwell, those in hospital, nursing homes or hospices. And we pray your protection over those who selflessly care for them each day. We pray now, Lord, for those who have lost a loved one. Keep them close to you and uphold them in their time of grief. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray now for all those whose mental health has been affected in the last few months due to anxiety or worries. Lord, give them peace of mind and calm their troubled hearts. Help them to find the support network they need and to trust in you. We thank you, Lord, that although we all live different lives in different situations, you are constant, your love never changes, and we can rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we just have time for one more song before we close. And we're going to go back to Ricky and Jane, who've been leading us in our music this morning. And it's Our God is a Great Big God. If you know the actions, I encourage you uh, to do them wherever you are right now. Well, I hope you're not too exhausted after singing that wonderful song and doing actions, perhaps. Just before we have our final prayers, just want to say a huge thank you for joining us today. It's an absolute privilege to share in times of worship uh, with people in our parish and with you today. Please do stay uh, online, go and grab a cuppa and come back to our Facebook page for coffee at the rectory where we have loads of fun, lots of chat, lots of discussion, sharing of good news. Please, you'll be very welcome to join us there, so please do join us. And um, if you're interested in finding out more about the Christian faith or uh, have any questions or would need like any prayer for anything, then please do contact us. You'll probably come through to me on our Facebook pages and it'll be a privilege uh, to chat with you or to answer any questions that you may have. I'm going now to have our final prayers. And this first one, if you would say with me, Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us 
by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>